Hello everyone, and don't be scared, this is Ubisoft back when he wasn't sucking donkey dicks, but whatever. Um, yep, this is Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Sands of Time. And since it's the HD version, it's in 3D, but no, I'm not playing the 3D version, don't worry. Oh yeah, um, that's right, I remember back when a lot of games had this novelty of... Now, you could a bit of a history lesson here. Um, Prince of Persia goes way back to the days of the Amiga, Commodore 64 and MS-DOS computers. It was composed by three titles, which, which were platforms which, uh, in the style of things like Ape's Odyssey, with uh, multiple screens, uh, jumping, platforming and harsh difficulty. Then, uh, after a while, Ubisoft actually acquired the AP and decided to reboot it with this uh, uh, trilogy, we're about to start with this game, the so-called Sand Trilogy. PS2, the GameCube, and the Xbox 2, I think. Um, and we start with the, the Sands of Time. Even Game Boy Advance. Yeah, but it had also a lot of spin-offs, even for the PSP and the Nintendo DS. No, no, then Sands of Time got a Game Boy Advance release. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, yes. you, you, uh, yeah, a sad thing is that this game doesn't have, at least from what I've seen, it doesn't have subtitles, so we're gonna have to endure the voices that we're told. And for the main game, it's fine, but for some cutscenes and all of the FMVs, it may suffer a bit from Sonic Adventure 2 Syndrome, where the music tried to drown out the voice acting, oh, so I tried to balance things out a bit. That seemed to be a thing in 6th gen if you weren't the GameCube or Xbox. Now, I don't remember the, the HD port, but for now, let's just start the game. And here's an interesting thing, if you d type in a combination, just stand still in this screen, you actually get to play the original game. Awesome. Ah, cool. So it's like in Space Invaders Invasion Day, where you can play the original Space here's Invaders. A, now, here's a bit of a story, Dweebs. It's actually important for the whole trilogy. Yuri Lowenthal? Yep. He plays our protagonist. Because when I think of Persia, I immediately think of American trying to do a British accent. Eh, tends to be a thing with those sort of countries because of Europe's takeover of them, especially India. Shyamalan? Is this what the movie's based on? Yeah, yeah. Basically, our protagonist, as he said, is the pre is the pre the heir to the throne of Persia, and right now his father is conquering this city of Amaraja, uh, you know, and in order to pillage it, and he got help from the Maraja's vizier, this guy. Now, the Reeves, tell me, this guy is clearly a trustworthy person, am I right? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm sure he's just a regular smoke. I mean, I don't mind the fact that he looks completely like Jafar, but whatever. Well, he is a vizier, and I guess who's vizier's uh, that? Um, who's, uh, which one's the one that Ben Kingsley played? What? Uh, He's asking I which mean, of the Ben Kingsley characters in the movie would correspond to the game. Actually. Yeah, it doesn't. It, 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 here's the thing, Dweebs. Since uh, the prince is telling the story to the player and to someone we'll see later, uh, basically the game has this narration. Basically the prince narrates the events. Uh, it's a giant entire flashback pretty much. And uh, uh, the prince is telling all of this. So here's um, an interesting thing. The controls for this game are actually pretty unique because you get your standard uh, uh, hack and slash stuff with the square button for attacks, the X for jumping and dodging, and their one for pairing. But when it comes to moving around and platforming, you mostly use the R1 button because the is very acrobatic. Yeah, you can do very parkour, a lot of parkour. And um, you get around to manipulate, take advantage of the environment, basically. In case you're wondering, Dweebs, obviously, 
this is the franchise that uh, inspired and was basically the precursor to Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed pretty much started as a Prince of Persia spin-off, and then it became his own thing, and we all know what happened. <laughs> where's, uh, the, where's the music? Yeah, in, in, in Here's the thing, Waves. In order, well, it will be more prevalent later on, you know, to understand. But aside from combat, music is not as prevalent when the prince is walking around. In order to give a bit more atmosphere, sort it makes, of. It makes sense in context. <laughs> and believe me, Waves, it's much better compared to what we did for the second title. But we'll get to that. Yeah. I fucking hate War Within, but. So I'm, tell I'm me, Tio, do you hate Warrior? Which do you hate more, Warrior Within or the second Ubisoft reboot? Wait, wait, wait. Um, Honestly, is it, you mean the one after this one? No, no, no. Yeah. Basically, the, Pedro, the second, there no, are two the, different the second, reboots. Hold on, Pedro, I'm saying the second title, Warrior Within, of the first Sand trilogy. What I was referring to was the reboot that was done in 2008. Basically, audience, wow. they made a reboot of the reboot for some unknown reason. Oh, we'll get to that when we'll get to that. Don't worry. For now, combat time. Now, I was too from. Uh, hold on. Assassin's Creed veterans will immediately recognize because it has the same same identical structure. Enemies will gang up on you, try to attack you all at one at a time. You just need to parry and attack uh, on your own. But the cool thing is that the prince can use his acrobatics to his advantage, but we'll see more again later. And in an interesting thing, you the prince doesn't automatically seat, seat his sword. You actually need a button to do so, a button press with a circle button in this case. I always found it a bit weird that he doesn't see it automatically, but I guess it wanted to add a bit more layer. And there's also the fact that the prince changes a bit his moveset from when he sheets he sheets his sword and when he puts it away. Also, another thing, dweebs, get used to a lot of these uh, slow mo frames at last because they happened a lot. I was just gonna say, I was gonna ask you, uh, how was the two thrones? Uh, the the third one. Yeah. A good compromise, because it compromised the first game and the second. Indeed. Right. And also, then Ubisoft made a fourth one called uh, The Forgotten Sands, and it's okay. Nothing special. So basically, drink water to regain health. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder why uh, the Wii Your version health. of Forgotten Sands got its own page. Actually, Dweebs, I'll tell you I'll tell you that when we get to that, ah. but it's interesting. I'm sorry, Taylor, but I, got, I'm sorry to, but I have to do good. it. Ah. Life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Uh, what's the name of this guy again? Uh, it's just the prince. He doesn't have a name. The prince feels uh, his body as he drinks the liquid. I like the say... movie who carries it on. What are you going to say to you? Who are you? A believe. spy. When it comes to the Forgotten Sands, there are not one, not two, not three, but four different stories. Uh, four. Because they're tied to different versions. However, yep. the only the, the canonical one, the one with Sony Canon with the timeline, is the the one I'm gonna record, the one for PS3, Xbox 360, and PC. There's the Wii version, which has a different story, the PSP version with a different story, and the Nintendo DS version with a different story. I'm tempted to help uh, you, in recording yeah, the if, other if, versions. If, 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 any, if any of you guys want to take all the other the, the other version, be my guest. Oh, but yeah, I yeah, Tia's right though. I remember it was the talk of town. There Every... you go. That's the prince acrobatic move. Basically, it can be an pretty much an insta kill with a good chunk of enemies. But later on, you get enemies who get around that moves. Don't rely too much on it. Go ahead, Dova. But yeah, like Tia said, yeah, I remember it being the talk of town how there were different stories for the versions. Like, why me go? Okay. Nobody was surprised that, you know, handheld versions would get different versions, but then console versions getting different stories was sort of a new thing at the time. Basically, Ubisoft back in the day wasn't sure how to treat the franchise because after the 2008 reboot, people were not exactly pleased, but they didn't want it exactly to go back to the Sand trilogy. With the, with the two with the, the two thrones, the trilogy gets a nice conclusion, so you couldn't go after that. Then why did they make the fourth one? Which is a set in between one and two, actually. I know, uh, I know, but you know how people tend to feel about the fourth one and how it's... Yeah, you know, that uh... reminds me of, um... Okay, it's, it's not, it's, there's no story difference, but there's actually cutscene difference uh, in the first and um, maybe second as well. Even one, of the, even one of the two Forced Unleashed games had that, where the Wii version is completely different cutscenes yeah. to... Uh, 
So. Yeah, even the PSP version, I remember it because I played it. Yeah. I could do force the force on these games if you want. Sure. Sure. By all means. Even though it means I gotta do the second one. Mm. Oh come on, Dwebs, oh, we ought to do Dweebs. bad games here. Uh, remember Dweebs, the, the bonus side is very short. That's also kind of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it also has the most pointless level in all of gaming. Do tell. The Dagobah level. And that's exactly yeah. why I forgot it, because, oh god, that level. There you go. When it comes to the gram uh, with the ledges and everything, this this is pretty much the same as, for example, God of War, which came out uh, during the same time. Pretty much, you just uh, climb around. Basically, the, all the platforming. Basically, this reboot, because remember, it's the first reboot from the old franchise, gets a good compromise of trying to be more, more hack and slash, but retains, uh, thanks to the parkour the classic elements of platforming and sometimes difficulty because sometimes you need to really see the environment how it looks like and how to take advantage of it mm. there we go okay. go ahead weaves i was just thinking as uh damn that that level you just walk a bit and talk to yoda about something completely pointless hey dweebs and that's it yeah um you want to know something that's even worse what the Sanctuary. Which one was that again? Um, from... Shoot, what was the third game in that series that was so bad that at this point you can pretty much get it free to you? Uh, I forgot. Um, Angry Joe covered, like, the top whatever reasons oh, it's... Oh, reason. I think. Reason. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Anyway, hold on. Okay. Sometimes you get... Well, you get sometimes the... Um, the here you go, the save points of it are are automatically in the story and the prince tells you if you want it but later on will be more uh, more, more evident don't worry now the reason why i'm just starting because i, I contemplated ending the first part here but it was too early so might as well move on go ahead jova um trying to remember um what was it about uh, genre wise kingdom rpg uh, is a kingdom story Art? No, no. no honestly, it was reason, no, reason was about pirates later on. Well, actually, so can I? Go ahead. Um, uh, I'm speaking oh. as a fan of. The dagger of time. I just remembered or, it. The dagger of time. Yeah, that will be important later on. And then so was it in Java? The class. Oh, the game. No, no, first Pedro. First Pedro, come on. Ah, uh, Java was first. Go ahead, Java. Yeah. The game was Fable 3. Oh, right, that, Fable. I that forgot. game is so bad nowadays that I, that you can get it for well, free. Well, remember, Micro, Microsoft closed even its Lionsgate studio because of it. Anyway. Because we wanted to make... A... Was that Landhead? Landsgate is a film studio. No, Sorry, I'm uh... confused. See, Dwayne, here's how it went. With the Sanctuary, every time you wanted to do something, anything like, say, save, transfer an item to a friend or whatnot, you would have to go to this room called the Sanctuary. And then you, in order to transfer items you and make sure that it was in, you'd have to go to that friend of your Sanctuary. As in, you'd Basically, have to do everything. Imagine having a loading screen for everything. Not only that, but then you have to access everything from a map like okay say you want to save well so then you pause like... and then you have to walk over here to save you want to do that again walk over here to save and this isn't just a matter of you know saves coming no you literally have to go into a giant room and select save to do anything and everything even sometimes so it's... it's your map so it's the action equivalent of tweenies game time tweenies sort of game time uh, I, I, I mean, we have know that stuff. Anyway, another key component to Prison of Persia, obviously, are the traps. Now, these ones obviously start simple, but they don't get even more complicated to avoid, so always watch out for them. Anyway, you were saying, Pedro? Speaking as a fan of uh, puzzle adventure, sorry, puzzle platformers, uh, I'm not exactly... I, I get that this game does the balance and still has uh, some of those elements, but I don't really. I'm not really keen on adding combat to what was previously a puzzle platformer that relied purely on those elements because mm -hmm. adding combat well, kind of detracts from that. There focus. was combat even in the original series. Remember? Yeah. Oh well, yeah, was but always not... combat. Well, yeah, but, but not as much as the the games will come uh, later, a right? It's just a different way to approach. Uh that i mean yeah. since it was in 2d it was more similar to actual uh skirmish while this one is more akin to 
traditional hack and slash slash beat em up. And combat or not, it's not like the combat interferes with the puzzle platforming, <laughs> so I don't really see the issue there. There we go. And... Uh, easy. Basically, we, 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 basically, if you haven't understood, the prince needs to need come in for himself, obviously, for, for appearing good at his father's eyes. And he wants to, to do so, he wants to steal that uh, dagger that is, we saw before. And basically, we're coming from the other side of the room to get it. Uh, but since you, since these, these uh, balcony is collapsing, we need to be very careful. So, um, hang on. In the movie, didn't, didn't his dad die because of a poison coat? D don't. Dwibs, I'm just going to clear that. <laughs> Dwibs, rule number one about Prince of Persia. Movie ain't the best uh, way to try and get the, uh, shall also, we say, source in information. In case you're wondering, these HD remasters was made, but actually Ubisoft himself, Montreal and uh, Sofia. You know, it's, 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 it's hilarious, though, because Prince of Persia, the movie, was directed by directed Goblet of Fire, and that film's commonly criticized for its pacing issues. In the Prince of Persia movie, he hadn't improved at all. I think he got worse, actually, at pacing. Seriously, you know, they go from, you know, jolly, jolly happy times to, like, a split second later, father dies, and then he goes on a chase, like, three seconds afterwards. I think many of us can agree that that movie sucks. Your mother cannot be with you anymore. And it's apparently, I don't know if it's still the highest grossing video game movie adaptation, but even then it didn't make all that much, considering its budget. Yeah. Well, isn't, isn't it didn't get surpassed by Assassin's Creed, though? I no, it, I don't think I don't think it did. No, hmm. I think uh, I think Warcraft might have done that actually. Well, e either way, either way, but both Warcraft and Assassin's Creed are shit movies anyway. So yeah, yeah. I think here's they another thing I think uh, they for the wall. Oh. oh god, oh, hold on, actually important stuff because we're dead. Actually, the dagger itself. All right, and with it comes an interesting power. Time rewinding. Nice. Even the music's going backwards. Yeah. Did they just rewind the footage? <laughs> well, time to make our escape through that convenient doorway over there. And there you go. Th those circles on the on the left are your quote unquote sand meter. They basically, every time you die or are you gravely injured, you can press L1 to rewind time back uh, for a certain period. It doesn't uh, do for everything. And it consumes one of that, one of those globes. You can replenish them, but we'll see later how. Yeah, that's actually the one thing I will give the movie. The time reversing thing did look kind of cool. Mm. It's like the only one of the few things that I can praise about the movie. <laughs> yeah, I think even Chester E. Bum mentioned that in his review. Oh, the, the time there we go. Look cool. All right, now actually important F and D because basically this is set up. Uh, the this was pretty much just a tutorial. Oh God, that face. <laughs> PS2 F and Vs. Wait, did he say that's his uncle? No, no, no sir. He said. <laughs> Even as a cobra staff. <laughs> You're okay, you dude. You to check your lungs, man. <laughs> All right. After pillaging the city, um, the um, the king of Persia actually travels to a neighbor kingdom in order to uh, not pillage that one too, but to basically giving gifts so we, we can forge an alliance, an alliance between them. Of course, the offering is of uh, naked women. That too, but the biggest place, the big, the, big, the biggest plate. Is actually the the hourglass itself, as he mentioned. 
In exchange for peace, I offer you Angelina Jolie. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, uh, Jolie's hot and all, but there's many Old others that take over her, though. Ding! We seem to be mentioning time a lot lately. Well, guys, it's time. Oh, and well, here's uh... the first thing. Yeah, the Bizir is actually explaining them how we work. But in order to actually be activated, we need to use the dagger. I'm sure this will cause no harm at all. Is this going to turn into end time at some point? Even worse, Dibs. Just watch. Uh, sure. Seconds out, man. And here we go. No. Oh, shit. You created the apocalypse. Yeah, actually, not just any apocalypse. Yeah, whatever you said. Please don't tell me Norg is gonna pop out from there. <laughs> oh, they're, let me guess, they're gonna turn into monsters? Yeah, Sand Zombies Apocalypse. Oh! Okay. Mark, don't turn him into a... The Vizier, he actually uses his magic to protect himself. But the prince, uh, well, because he has the dagger, obviously. Jesus. So, yeah, we fucked up. Oh dear. Oh yeah, the, the, the women are being attacked. Well, the women and the men, basically citizens all together. Well, it's a good thing that door didn't cut on top of her head. <laughs> like, literally, that was okay. like... Close. All right. Here's how it works. Uh, these will be your main enemies in the game. You first, you cannot escape from them because they teleport uh, right to you. Second, you know they need to be killed permanently, which means uh, when you kill normally, quote unquote, they fell on the ground. Then you need to press the triangle button, and the prince will use the dagger to absorb them into the dagger itself. And you doing this, you can also replenish uh, your sand meter left. The thing is, you're not invulnerable while you do so. So if an enemy attacks you while doing so, you're still gonna get damaged. The cool thing, the good thing is that being the same of Assassin's Creed combat, the enemies will take a sweet time to attack you, so they have some sense of fair play. So you'll need good timing for this one, then. Yeah, and good positioning also. Another thing is that uh, the enemies come in waves, so you will know exactly when the combat is over because because the prince will either do the gesture where he puts his sword away or something will tell him that there are no more zombies. Yes, For now, you just need basically to endure and kill everything. It's not that hard, especially if you use the trick I'm using about the acrobatics and everything. If you try to use normal combat, you're gonna be there for, the, for an eternity because uh, uh, they tend to parry a lot. And there's <laughs> also the fact that... The Go ahead, Lips. One of the books earlier just hit his own guy. <laughs> yeah, that can actually happen, and, and you can use that to your own advantage. The pole arms have a lot, have a long reach, so you can use that to your advantage with groups of enemies. There we go. That should have been the last. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there's that check from the cutscene. Yep. She's gonna, we're gonna meet them, her again later. Let me guess, she's the love interest. You'll see about that. It's not as obvious as you think. Yeah. And here's another cool thing. These things are actually the same point, but we also show these glimpses of the future, which will be the action we will need actually in order to progress the next couple of rooms. This is an actually cool, it's an actually cool feature. So the, the prince is our only hope. Pretty uh, much. Uh, our. Uh, get it? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Libs, you're draining part... Pedro's life essence with that terrible joke. <laughs> well, guys, nah. it's uh, it's it's time to go for now. 
Yes, go ahead. To yeah, in the, in the next in the next part we'll see we'll see what happened to the what Pedro called the love interest. See you, everybody. See ya. See ya.